Good evening, everyone. How are you? Good. Are you having a good time so far? Yes. If you didn't notice, everyone that came before me is trying to get every one of you to see what's inside of you, in case you haven't figured it out. It's there. But sometimes you need a little push to bring it out. And everyone who's come before me had a story to tell. And you all have the same thing. The title today, Ordinary Women Who Live Extraordinary Lives. We're all ordinary. That extra is just a little bit more that these women before me and men shared with you today. But like we stated before, we need the extra push. When I started the Caribbean and American Global Business Connections, I didn't see that platform for my people. I'm a product of the Caribbean, and I'm a product of the US. And I decided that there was a void, and when there's a void, you fill it. When you're frustrated, you fix it. When you want to put you on display, you figure out a way to bring it forth. So as I network in Atlanta, I couldn't find a Caribbean platform. As I network, I got backlash about what the Caribbeans contributed. And they're saying we didn't contribute. And I knew that was a lie. Because as we can see, we left our countries of birth and islands of birth and went to the US for what? A better life. And we did that. But no one knew what we were doing. We didn't make ourselves visible. So I wanted the world to see what the Caribbeans have contributed. And I also wanted to repair the myth of our contributions. Because of many as you know, when our parents took us to the US like mine did, we knew we were going for what? A better life. Of course, the parents that reared us weren't gonna let us sit by the wayside and be a liability. My topic today is, are you going to be an asset or are you going to be a liability? I wasn't going to be an asset. Of course, my mother wasn't going to let that happen. We know Caribbean parents how they are. You're not going to put them to shame. You're not going to have people say bad things about you and your family. And as I grew in Brooklyn, New York, trying to find myself, it had to go back home. As a child, I always tell people, what you probably was destined to be was given to you from the time you were born till about maybe 10 or 11 years old. Think back. Think back what you love to do so much. And as you grow older, you kind of lose yourself somewhere along the ways. You lose lots of what was already there. As you get much older, you form, you get your families, children, you take care of them, and you still let yourself go by the wayside. And then here it comes back and it slaps you in the face, and you're trying to figure out how to make it public. So when I created the, the platform, the CABC, I said, I'm gonna bring forth my contribution, my people's contribution, and put it on display. And so, Last April, the CABC platform was formed. I knew it was gonna be a hard task because a lot of the Caribbean people, even though they're doing things, they're in a nutshell, and I had to bring them out. I went on foot, my husband and I, friends, and we gave out flyers, and we told them, here, I want you to come. I want everyone to see what you have to offer. And I'm gonna tell you, I was shocked at the turnout. And that day, you know, many times when we start our businesses, our platform, we have goals. And I set mine at three years out. And when that event was over, I was told, when is the next one? Because Jamaicans, Bajans, Guyanese, Bahamians, I actually did a count of the different countries that were represented. And they say, where have you been? And then I realized I couldn't stop. 
So there are four topics I'm gonna to touch on today that has led me to where I am today. And I might say, I was not supposed to be here today. I wasn't part of this program when it initiated. And Mr. Aubrey Patmore and Yvette Maynard and Pat Maynard will tell you, I wasn't a part of this program. And I'm saying that to say, dream big, think big. Because you never know when someone will listen and hear what you have to say. I've been in talks with Mr. Patmore for two months. He told me about this event, and next thing I knew, this conversation evolved. And he's been listening, and I tell you all, be mindful of what you say, and be mindful of your visibility, because somebody is always watching you. Whether you're not paying attention to yourself, others are. And that's information that's documented every day of your life. Whether you take notice or not, somebody else is watching you. I say this to the young students as well. We know the social media is so vital and it's, it's a very big part of, of their lives. And they're quick to get on the internet and like things and comment on things. Be mindful of what you comment and like because it can affect you later on in life, good or bad. So my first topic will be know who you are. I've learned that you are responsible for your character, not someone else. The work that you put in, you should be responsible for that. Never let anyone else dictate or document your work. And do it in such a way that it will never be discredited. You're responsible for that. You're the author of your book, your story. Be a leader and not a follower. We hear this all the time. Easier said than done. What are you gonna lead in? Well, your passion. You heard it here today. We have it. Figure out what it is. In case you can't figure it out, let me help you. You may have heard people say, oh, Norma, Girl, you're good at that. Have you ever thought about doing this with it? And Norma probably go, not really. That's when you denounce yourself and your gifts and other people uplifts it. Pay attention to that. You might hear someone else say, oh my gosh, you can make a great pound cake and you do it well. That's your gifts, that's your talent. It's never too small or it's never too big because that was meant for just you and no one else. Everyone stated, listen to your inner voice. Be a better you, because you're responsible for you, no one else. You're responsible for you. And we talked about the word legacy, such a broad word. Many a times, we don't pay attention to where we came from, our family our backgrounds, good or bad. I had educators in my background, didn't think anything of it. My grandfather was a headmaster. My uncle, my cousin in the back, her father was a headmaster. That is not by coincidence. That was what I was around. My aunt and her husband was in politics. All these things are happening, but as a child, you didn't realize how productive it was and how it can form you and has shaped you to who you will become. But a lot of times we don't know how to interpret that, interpret that as children. As we grow and we get older, we can interpret those, those actions that took place. We then say, huh, that's a part of me. So then what's your legacy is gonna be? What is your children gonna say they're proud of? What are the people gonna say at your eulogy, have you thought about that? We talked about the beginning and the end. The date you were born and the date you will expire. What's in the middle? It's not too late to fill it. Many a times people give up themselves to help others. You've got a 95 year old woman who said her dream, in the US, her dream was to earn a bachelor's degree, yes? She was on a plantation, well, you know, helping others live their lives, clean their homes, send her kids to school, and she never 
got an education, and she knew it wasn't too late. She was still alive, she was still living, she was still existing. And that means that dream is still achievable. You don't let it go by the wayside. And if it's nagging at you, that's when you know, I've got to achieve this before I expire. Because that's a reality, you're gonna expire. But your dreams can be attained anytime. So pay attention to what you think you want to achieve. Start any time. You're in charge. No one else is. And we talked about this passion of yours, which is the unique gift that everyone in this room was given, and it was given specifically for you. Some of us can't find it. We don't know how to locate it. We don't know how to utilize it. Well, surround yourself with people that's doing just that, like you saw here today. We all have a story. And we came out here, and we're going to share it with you. You'll probably be up here next year. Don't discount it. Because I'm going to tell you what people like you've seen today have done for me. It pushed me. It told me that I wasn't doing enough and I had things to do. It made me sit in a corner and listen. Because you've got to be quiet sometimes for it to start to flow through you. You've got to be quiet. And it starts to speak in volumes. And when you leave here today, you're going to go home and say, they're right. It's in me. I need to find it. And I hope today everyone has touched you in some kind of way. Whether it was laying dormant somewhere in you. Somebody said something here today that's going to make you go home and think. And probably be upset at yourself for not thinking about it sooner. But that's okay because that's what this platform is about. It's to bring out you to share with others. Now I'm in the field of networking. And I didn't understand what that word meant. When I went to my first networking event, I was told that I needed to uh, present my business card for a raffle, and I didn't have one. And I asked the lady, I says, well, how do I obtain a business card? And she said, girl, you need a business. Well, at the time, many of us, we believe a business, you need a lot of capital to get it started. I didn't know about network marketing companies, i.e. Avon, Mary Kay, a group of people who leverage one another for wealth and power and empowering others. So I had to learn the craft, and that's what I did. Uh, Avon, I was a customer. I never liked anyone approaching me to sell me anything, and I didn't want anybody calling my phone to offer me anything. But I'm saying this to say you've got to come out of your comfort zone sometimes. You've got to do uncomfortable things that will achieve you whatever that is that you're trying to seek. And so when I went to look for my Avon representative, she left. She didn't tell anyone she was leaving the business. So I ran to the internet, I looked online, and I was looking to find a representative. But right at the bottom where it says, do you want to buy? It says, do you want to sell? And I don't know what made me click that button, but I did. <laughs> and the lady came to my home the next day, and she told me, you know, it's only $10 to join. I said, for a business? $10? Again, network marketing companies. I'm new to the system. I said, I have $10. And then she tells me, I've got to take those cute little books and pass them out. And I did not want to do that. So she said, your first sale needs to be just $50. Well, like many of us, when we are being challenged in that way, we try to come out the easy way. And I said I was going to purchase those products for $50 and she would never know I didn't approach anyone else. <laughs> but always remember, sometimes when you follow some instructions that can change your life, try it. And at least so you tried. Because if you don't finish the race, you've got to start before you can finish. Whether it's going to hurt or whether you're going to love it. So I took the magazines, followed everything she said, and I went to work the next day. And I placed those magazines in the bathrooms. I placed them at my co uh, colleagues' uh, desks. And I just left them in a break room. And I went to lunch. And when I came back, 
emails. My email box was flooded. And I got scared because I didn't think anyone would want to buy anything. I was ready to fail. And I got home and I did the little sales slip. And she told me I had to get $50, remember that? But my sale was $350. Now, when I saw that number, I was like, wait a minute, she said 50, but I got 350, do the math. I wasn't gonna stop. And I was elated, I said, oh my God, I'm gonna roll. So I did my order, placed the order, the orders came and I gave them to the customers the next day and my friends, and I was on a roll. Let's just say within a year, I was one of the top salespeople. Now here's a person that was afraid to speak to people, didn't want anyone to approach her, but I did one thing for once. I followed some instructions that could probably have gone good or bad. And so my journey started. And I said, I've got my first business. Well, it took off from there. I got into another business because again, I'm learning the task and the craft of networking. And uh, here it is, April 15th of last year. I said, you know what, I can do this on my own, but I needed a platform. You know, with anything you're gonna do, you have to have a platform. Whether it's music, whether it's speaking, whether it's a product of, of some sort. And my platform was to give a face to my people, the Caribbean people. And also, to have the interaction of our American friends with us as we show them what we're capable of, that we are contributors in their countries, and we're proud of it. So how do I get those two people together? Start an event, tell them to come out and promote their businesses, let's see their, their passions, their talents, give everybody a chance to speak. And we're going in a year. But I had to be consistent with what I was doing. Many a times I didn't charge because I wanted to get the message out. A lot of us here, we have different journeys that we're gonna take, or we have different approach. Mine was just to have integrity about what I did and have a platform that was gonna be consistent. And I was gonna mature to change the face of the people of the Caribbean. Network marketing has quite a few ingredients that you have to exemplify. And one of them is the social factor, the speaking factor. If you're gonna come to an event to promote your business, you gotta know how to speak. You gotta know how to tell everyone who you are, what you do, and in what capacity you can help them or others. So I had to figure out a way, when I bring these people together, how can I get them all to go up and speak? It was challenging at first because they weren't used to that. You know, a lot of the events we have in Atlanta, you have mixers and events, you have people just exchange business cards, but I, I wanted to let them know it's deeper than that. Because I have to know that we have to form that relationship first before I can support you. So I had to go back to the basics and let them know when you come here, don't always expect to conduct a sale or hope that somebody will buy something from you. It doesn't work like that. When you open a store for the very first time, you have to market, advertise, and you hope people come through the doors, but you've got to make that direct contact. They need to know who you are. You can't expect someone to come and support you and don't know anything about you. And then when you open those doors, you have to show them that the quality that you're giving them will be, will continue on. So we started off every month, we were moving around and shaking and then I realized something. They said, Miss Kelly, this event is too far. So now here comes the excuses. What do you mean too far? Well, you live out in the suburbs. Okay, so I change it up the next month. I'm gonna come to you so you don't have an excuse now. So I started to travel to different counties in Georgia to host my event. But then I got a little bit more creative. I'm gonna find your small business and I'm gonna come and spotlight you that way. So now I'm gonna bring people to you that you don't even know. And what does that do? Create more exposure for you. 
The word starts to spread that you're open for business, and they come. And so we went over seven, eight counties in less than 10 months. People will say, well, where is Fayette County? Look it up. There's a GPS, there's a map quest. They didn't argue with me, they came. I looked out and the parking lot was filled. We went, we started out in the Caribbean community. Many of you who are familiar with Atlanta, DeKalb County is highly West Indian population. I went there first. They're the people I need to uh, reach. So I went to them. Caribbean shipping, international roti house. I know them all because guess what? I support them and I knew where to find them. I didn't have a problem. But we had a problem with some of them. They did not get my concept. So I still knocked on their doors. I said, let me tell you something. When I started this, I was being asked, why the Caribbean and American? Why not? It's a part of me. If I'm gonna create something that's a part of me, I need to be a product of it. I need to feel it. I need to let you see that this is a part of me and I wanna share it with you. Not only that, I said, you're open for business, but nobody else knows but the Caribbean community. You're here in this society, and people want your gifts and your services, but you're not making yourself accessible to them. There's a problem there. They started coming. I email blast, I put them on that, I go on foot. And now I'm excited that they understand what it is I was trying to do because at every event, I always like to acknowledge the countries that are there and they like that because now they see that they're all in one place and they have a backing, they have a platform, mine. I have a mantra that I follow. I have several, but this one came to me when I realized that handouts is not something that people always get. You gotta find your way, and you gotta invest in yourself. Government is not gonna help you. You can create your own, but you gotta understand how to invest in you. And what does that mean? You've heard many people here today say that what they have inside, they, they want to share with you. That's what we're doing here today. We're sharing what we love with you, so you can then do the same for the betterment of you and others. This is how you are an asset to you and an asset to your community. Not a liability, not a hindrance, not sitting by the wayside. I also live by a quote that it just came to me when I realized I was in the event and I was looking on and I was in the audience and it just came out of nowhere and I said, at that event, I was a spectator. I wasn't the main attraction. How many of you are spectators, sitting by the wayside? Be the main attraction, whatever that might be. It's never too big, it's never too small. Make a difference. Don't think if you're in the same category or business category as someone else, you're not gonna be relevant. You're your own unique person. You have thousands of realtors, lawyers, doctors, but are all of them the same? Do they all give you the same quality of work? No. So you make that uniqueness about you stand out. Figure out how to stand out from everyone and be the main attraction in what you do. You always hear people say, if you're gonna do something, do it well. Do it so when they ask you what makes you different, you can tell them. My event, these events go on every day in Atlanta. And I always get the question, what makes you different? Well, I tell them. Tell me which organization travels to different communities to find small businesses, medium-sized businesses, and put them on display. Tell me which organization gives everybody an opportunity to speak and display their talents and gifts. Tell me which organization attempts and is attempting to create a global partnership with the Caribbean, the global, and the American community. So this was not an easy task. 
As the event grew, my thoughts started to grow. The ideas were getting larger and larger. Again, I should not have been here today, but I am. Because I dreamt big a long time ago, and I give coming to the career for the next three years. And here it is, less than a year, I'm in the Caribbean. Not by accident, because my dreams were so big, and the people who have been listening to me listened well, and I thank them for that. I always say, if no one cheers you, know that you're your biggest cheerleader. You don't need validation from anyone else other than yourself and whomever you serve. They will, he will never deny you. The school children I speak to, many of them never hear the word that you're great and you will be somebody from their parents. Of course, the school, that's not their job to raise your children in that capacity. When you instill this, these things, these ideas, these beliefs in your children, you won't have problems out of them. When you exercise certain things that they can see and say, you know what, I'm gonna be just like that and or better, you won't have a problem out of them. When you bring them to events like this, I'm glad we have some young ones in the audience, you won't have a problem out of them because you are setting an example for them. My child is an exa is, is, it's happened to her as a little girl. My husband and I at the time, we would study in the evenings. And this is a baby, she's a toddler. And she would see us doing our homeworks. And she would leave her toys and sit down and say, well, I can read a book too. And she mimicked what we did. Now tell me whether good behavior or bad are being taught. She didn't see anything else to do. And every afternoon, she knew what, to, what we were getting ready to do, and that is study. And she would get her book, and she would be ready to go. And we would just chuckle because we realized how influential we are in our children's lives. We are their first contact of influence from the time they're born. We will not be the last because we do have outside influences. But we need to lay the foundation and remind them that they have to adhere to society, be productive members of society, and we hope they carry that on. You know, again, I'm gonna keep saying this, the Caribbean family, they don't play. You don't have a set of parents. You have parents, you have a village, and that's still very relevant today. So be mindful of the information you give to your children, because then that legacy will not be tampered with. It will be carried on. Obstacles, oh my gosh, do we get these or not? And I, what I call dream killers. I don't think your family is on dream killers. Because my entire family don't support what I'm doing and I don't need their approval. I am my own approval. But no, when you brag about what you love, not everybody's gonna come on board. Not everybody is going to like it because they're mad they didn't think of it. But I keep saying, that was not given to them. It was given to you. You execute what's given to you, not somebody else's. And you never let all those no's deter you. Because you're gonna get a bunch of no's before you get one big yes. And when you get that one big yes, off you go. So you're gonna get a lot of no's. I still get them. And I just laugh. Because that one little note didn't do anything for me. Brush it off and keep it going. Because I have too much going on for one little stinking no. <laughs> now I'm gonna leave you with some quotes. I know we're running short in time. And I want you to incorporate this in your daily lives. And this can be for anybody, woman, man, or child. Invest in you because no one else will. No one else. You are responsible for that. You have to take control. You should know what you want and how you can start the journey. Surround yourselves with people who think just like you and don't see you as a threat. 
You should be able to speak to anyone that has come before you and that are willing to share the journey with you without grudge. And always know there is someone watching. I say that all the time. You might can dream from now on for the next 10 years, but somebody's watching because they're not going to give you what you so deserve until they feel you are ready. A lot of times you're not ready. You think you are. This is why when you ask for things that don't come the next day, everybody here told you 10, 20, 30 years of a journey. Not last week and they're here today. It don't work like that. You have to go through some obstacles. You have to go through challenges. Because then you don't have what? A story. It didn't just give it to you. You got to work for it. You got to work for it. And you got to know that you're going to stumble and fall. You're going to have naysayers. Your mother and your father going to want you to be somebody else. But your burning desire will never fail you. It's, it will remain there. And it's waiting for you, for you to say, hey, I'm awake. Let's, let's execute. And I always say, be the best that you can be. Because when you do it, they're going to say, man, she did that very well. Now, we live by words. I live by words, and you should too. Affirmations, we talked about that earlier. Words are powerful. Because if you keep saying, Lord, I can't do this, I can't, I can't, you believe it after a while. And when somebody tells you you can't, you believe that as well. But you need to affirm who you are and what you're destined to be. I went to a, an event a couple of weeks ago. No intention of what I was getting myself into. And we did an affirmation. We all did. And I'm going to have you all repeat your affirmation here in a second. You probably don't know what it's going to be, but I'm going to tell you what it's going to be. Because your, your name is your affirmation. Your being is your affirmation. What you say you're going to do is your affirmation and no one else. And I was given an exercise with adjectives, action verbs, and nouns. Five. I had to pick five from a list of over a hundred. And basically what that was going to do was have me confirm who I say I am and what I was going to go on to do. Was I going to continue on the journey I say I am? Am I doing what I say I'm doing? And so when I chose the words, I didn't know what we were going to do with them. They say flip the page. And already a scene was pretty much laid out for us. And we had to slip those words into some spaces that was already predestined, as I say now. And when I read those words, everybody in the room, we had to repeat it over and over again. Because that was going to be confirmation of our journey, whether we started the journey or we were in the middle of it. And at the end of that, we were all crying, men and women, in that room. Because these people made us repeat over and over our affirmations. And I left there feeling detoxified. I felt like I'd gotten rid of some things I needed to let go. And I became a new person. And I made a copy of that and I gave it to some people that I surround myself with. And they weren't too big to receive it, even though these are women who have been in their careers for years. And this is Sabrina, thank you. Because we are all still on a journey. We all know that. The work is not done. It will never be until we expire. So I want you all to stand up and repeat these words with me. But you're going to repeat it with your own names. And I'll share mine and then I want you to follow suit. I, Sabrina Summer Kelly, will persevere. And you will say, I will persevere. If you can please say that with me. I will persevere. I, Sabrina Summer Kelly, will persevere. I And here's the last thing, and this is the most powerful. I, and please repeat your name, Sabrina Summer Kelly, will never give up. And victory is mine. Victory is mine. Say it again. I, I 
will never give up and victory is mine. I will never give up and victory is mine. Thank you all and hope today gave you something to take back and start your journey and execute. Thank you.